Labor's criticising the government over the latest Closing the Gap report, arguing a decline in Indigenous disadvantage has occurred on their watch. Let's go live to political reporter Eliza Edwards for more. Eliza, the Indigenous Affairs Minister admits there has been little improvement over the past seven years of the Coalition Government. Tom and Annalise, new targets will be set by April, but when you look back at the last 12 years over uh, for the Closing the Gap, there's been very little improvement. Some changes made in uh, rates of Indigenous children attending preschool and finishing high school as well, but when it comes to child mortality rates, school attendance and employment outcomes, they're all poor and the life expectancy rate for Indigenous Australians is still much lower than for non-Indigenous Australians. Now, Ken Wyatt admits that this has happened on the government's watch but says it is a collective responsibility trying to pass the buck onto the states. Well it has but the implementation of many of these programs if you look at where and who delivers education it is state and territories. If we look at health the Commonwealth doesn't have hospitals or health programs but why we've failed I think it's fundamentally because we've not engaged the Aboriginal community with us. We've set targets as state and territory and Commonwealth governments. We said that we will achieve this. But if you want to change something, you've got to have the people who you are targeting sitting at the table with you. This is typically an area of bipartisanship, but Labor throwing that out the window today. Linda Burney taking aim at the government, saying that these failures over the past uh, have occurred on the government's watch over the past seven years. This neglect has happened on their watch, including the, the cutting of over half a billion dollars from the Aboriginal Affairs budget and walking away from Commonwealth responsibility in the Aboriginal Affairs space. It's dismal, it's unacceptable, and the people that suffer are not statistics, they are real people. They are cousins, they are sons and daughters, they are grandmothers, they are aunties. Uh, they are people that we know that die far too young in a first world nation as wealthy as Australia. We'll have the full annual report delivered by the PM at 11am, but Eliza, it could all be overshadowed by a fresh round of coalition infighting over constitutional recognition. Now, there was a bit of a stout in the coalition party room yesterday. Some Liberal senators expressing concerns that they hadn't been properly consulted or agreed to the timeline. The Indigenous uh, Affairs Minister originally set a timeline of a referendum on constitutional recognition by June next year. He's now walked that timeline back a bit in an interview uh, this morning. I don't want to get into timelines. I expressed, as any minister does, is a point of reference to a timeline that's potentially possible but the reality is is the constitutional recognition matter is a steady steady piece of work that requires a lot of engagement it'll require engagement not only of ordinary everyday Australians and our own people it'll require engagement within my own party with all of my colleagues and we have a process that goes to party room and cabinet at various phases of that work and we've not done that we haven't started that because that's not the front end of what I want to do the front end is making a difference on a daily basis to the lives of Indigenous Australians So Ken Wyatt no longer committing to holding that referendum by June next year, something that will no doubt be disappointing to Indigenous Australians who call for this strongly in the Uluru Statement of the Heart.